All right, a few things, youth Christmas party, progressive Christmas party coming up this Friday night. I think that's right. Is that Friday? Yeah. Okay. And uh, then the children's Christmas musical is when? Well, the gathering, not the musical. The gathering is on the 14th, and then the musical is on the 18th. And uh, that gathering that they're doing next Saturday if you want to come, be a part of that. They've got a meal planned out. They've got a lot of stuff. They're going to have some activities for the kids. And you, you know, you can be grandparents. You, you don't have to bring kids. You can just come be a part of it. But you need to get Miss Alta. Where are you at? Do, we, do they need to call and kind of put their name on a list? See Miss Alta. Let her know if you're coming. Uh, somebody, let them know so we know how many to get prepared for. So please let us know. It is $10, but that's, again, just to pretty much cover the cost of all the things, ice cream bar, games, all kind of things going on. That's next Saturday from 3.30 to 5, okay? And then you see the information, the announcement about our pictorial directory there. A few things I want to announce that's not in your bulletin today. Uh, tomorrow night we will, have, uh, we will have a prayer. During the month of December, we're just praying every Monday night. And uh, we're going to be praying tomorrow night at Matt Nalta's house at 6 o'clock. I want to remind you of that. And then also, uh, tonight, uh, Brother Hugh and Brother Whalen are going to be leading us in some stuff here tonight. We're excited about what they're going to do. We're going to let that be a surprise to you. But uh, uh, after service this morning, I need some guys, if you would help out. We just need to get... Help them clear out the new fellowship hall over there. Get all the square tables out and move some round tables in for the children's events that are coming up the next couple of weeks. And so, guys, after church this morning, if you will, go over there and, and help us with that. Get that set up for them. Uh, one other thing, Matt, I was supposed to announce. You remember what it was? Oh, yeah. The Christmas card mailbox is out in the front. If you have, we, we do that where you can bring your Christmas cards, put them in there, and then there'll be a place where you can get your, others bring you some, and you can get them out. They're in there by alphabetical order. So uh, you can use that to keep having to pay postage. And uh, take that money that you would have spent on postage, and you put that in the Lighty Moon Christmas offering this year, okay? What you got, man? Amen? Is that your amen card? Amen. All right. <laughs> Matt's got an amen card. Just elbow Alta and make her say amen for you. <laughs> and she, her voice ain't much better than his is now. So I've heard of sympathy, pain, and stuff like that. But they sure got it going on over there. Yeah, Miss Alta? Right. Going? Going to the fellowship hall, and they're going to do the gingerbread houses, decorating, and have their Bible story over there today. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll get started. I'm sorry. What? Children's choir. We will have a practice this afternoon. If you have a solo in the musical, please be here at 430. If 3.30, excuse me. And if you have a uh, speaking part, be here at 4 o'clock Okay. in here. And what, thanks for reminding me, too. Personnel committee and the finance committee are going to meet today at 4 to finalize the budget and stuff for next year. <coughs> 4 o'clock today in the fellowship hall, uh, personnel committee and finance committee. All right, let's pray. Father, we do thank you that today we can gather here and and God, just worship you and know you and experience you. And, and Lord, we just ask that you would, uh, Lord, just move in our midst here this morning. Help us, Lord, to seek you, to worship you today, to evaluate you in our lives. And God, just move among us today as only you can. Speak to our hearts. And God, as we celebrate this wonderful time of the year. And so, Lord, we give you all praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. <clears throat> Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing, I'm 
time standing on the promises of God standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God I shall prevail standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior standing standing I'm standing on the promises of God standing on the promises of Christ the Lord bound to him eternally by love's strong cord overcoming daily with the spirit sword standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior standing standing I'm standing on the promises of God standing on the promises I cannot fall listening every moment to the Spirit's call resting in my Savior as my all in all standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior standing standing I'm standing on the promises of God Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him more and or Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Y'all have a seat. We have a wonderful video. It'll be here in just a moment. There it is. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him. Emmanuel. She was growing into a teenager and was living then in the obscure village of Nazareth in Galilee. She gathered the grain during the day and tended the lamp laid into the watches of the night. Her father knew the dedication of her work, her mother the kindness of her heart, her friends, the curve of her smile. She stood on the threshold of womanhood. Among all the girls in the village, she had been noticed, chosen, betrothed. A child bride before whom lay only possibility. Her father could walk with pride in the city gates. Her mother could rest in the comfort of her daughter's future security. But then he came, unexpected, unannounced, spoke openly and without shame of pregnancy virginity, and a son. Things men never discussed, and women only whispered about behind closed doors. She questioned him about the particulars, but not about the promise. She knew the prophecies, 
and the angel's words rang true. She would be scorned and rejected, labeled an adulteress in whispers and glances. There would be no more carefree walks to the market, no more happy trips to the well. Four hundred years her people had waited for hope, but God had been silent. Now he had spoken. The wait was about to end. Forty weeks, and then Emmanuel, God with us. Raise your voices. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. His name is called Emmanuel. God with us. His name is 
Ushers, y'all make your way down. It's getting harder and harder to get up them steps. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we're so thankful for this morning that we can stand here before you, Lord, and thank you for being washed in the blood. Father, we thank you for each one that's here. Father, for our visitors, we welcome them. And Father, we just ask that you be with Brother Mike now as he brings this message and bless these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So... For those of you that don't know me, I am Sandy and Danny Stuckey's daughter. My name is Lindsay. Um, I used to sing here a long time ago. I have not sang in probably seven, eight years, so y'all going to have to bear with me. This is old. Um, but my dad called and wanted me to sing for my mom for her birthday, so this was all his plan. Um, I, at first, whenever I heard, I was like, Psh, I'm not doing that. I haven't done this in so long, but I was like, I know my mama would do it for me. She would do anything for me, so that's why I wanted to do this for her. Um, the song that I'm singing has absolutely nothing to do with what my family's going through, but this is my mama's favorite song that I used to sing, so this is what I'm singing for her today. <clears throat> Said he loved, 
think we can make room for her to be on our regular solo schedule. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to let the children go out for children's church right now. Remember, you're going to the fellowship hall, not over to the children's building. All right.
Good looking group there. Good group. You know, while they're going over, I started to do this before they go over. I, some of the kids might be looking for a career. And I thought about this. I saw it yesterday, so it was too late for me to. I think I'm going to take up an arts and crafts career. I saw yesterday, put that picture up there. That sold for $120,000 at a museum in Miami. And in fact, you think stupid don't happen but once, but they sold a second one for $150,000. So I'm taking up that. I want to have those for sale at the next bazaar. And I'm going to just sell mine for $20,000 a piece. I'm not going to ask one hundred twenty. dollars I think that's selfish. So I just want $20,000 a piece for mine. Don't y'all think? It's worthwhile. Where is the world going? Amen? Where is the world going? Man, I'd eat that banana, but I don't know about the $120,000 deal. Well, this morning, I just thought that was a good little funny before we got started there. That's a true story, believe it or not. $120,000 for a banana stuck with duct tape on a piece of poster paper. Wow. Y'all was, was selling the wrong stuff yesterday. Y'all didn't have no bananas up here for sale. That's what it was. Well, amen. I, today I want to talk to you as we prepare for the Christmas season. I want to call it Sensing God at Christmas, and we're going to talk about all the different ways God has used people, and uh, He has the ways that God has, has used people, it really in, in just in dynamic ways, but you'll notice that the people that God uses are people who are sensitive to what God is saying and doing in and around them. People who can hear God. and So we're going to look at the five senses of that man has today and all those ways that we sense God this morning. Before I start on my outline, I want to show you two more pictures. How many of you put that picture of Macaulay Calkin up there and that show Home Alone. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember when he made that story? Now, now, sadly, Macaulay Calkin didn't sense God. It hadn't sensed God. Put the new picture up there. Wow, we should have made that picture bigger where everybody could see it. But, uh, you know, isn't it kind of amazing that we live in a, a culture when uh, we can kind of, we, we need to sense God, don't we? Are you going to get left behind and off track of, of God? So anyway, you can take that down. How important is it that we manage our lives with God and let God be involved in our lives? Or we're going to see more and more folks just, the world will eat you up. Amen? I, I had a, a guy that led music for me one time at a second church I pastored. and Well, that was at that church I told you all I refereed for a couple of years. But uh, anyway, uh, he, he led music. But he, his big deal, he wanted his kids to go to Hollywood and be actors. And I'm like, to myself, I'm saying, are you out of your mind? You know? You're talking about a place that will chew you up and spit you out. That, Hollywood's one of those places that will do it. And uh, come find out later, he had his own issues. But, uh, you know, you just it's amazing to me. This world would love to do what the devil wants it to do, to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we've got to stay focused. We've got to stay focused on what God is saying because this world is full of lies, and the devil is the father of lies. We know that. And so today we're going to talk about this... Uh, Sensing God in the Christmas story, and you're going to just use some examples here at the beginning of the Christmas story. Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 18, I want you to see with me how that Mary and Joseph really needed, I mean, they had to encounter God, much like the video you saw a while ago, how the angel had come to Mary. Well, they also appeared to, to Joseph and about what to do and how that God would use them and so, and let me tell you something, in our busy world today, we have to make a concerted effort to hear God. A concerted effort to sense what God is saying, what God is doing. Otherwise, we'll lose our way in a heartbeat. If your total focus is on that little screen, you know, there's a big phrase now that's popular now, and it's called screen time. Yeah, everybody, how much screen time you have every day? How much screen time do we give our children? And so, you know, the, the world wants you attached to that screen 
instead of sensing what God is saying and doing. And I worry about Brother Ray back there. Brother Ray is spending way too much time on the screen. Brother Ray, you're just too much time on your computer and your iPad and your smartphone, Brother Ray. you got to slow down, Brother Ray. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go anywhere with that, Brother Ray, because I don't know how smart your phone is. But anyway, look at what it says in the beginning of verse 18. Would you stand with me and honor the reading of God's holy word? In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take, to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will save this pe his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall... Be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And so as we look at this this morning, what a message. You see, Joseph had to be alert and aware to what God was trying to do. And he could hear God speak to him, even through a dream. Let me give you another example, chapter 2. Just look down at the next chapter, verses 12 to 15. It says then, you remember the story here where the, the, uh, the wise men had come to find the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, and then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed from their own country another way. And when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child with his mother and flee to Egypt, and there stay until I bring you word, for Herod will seek a young child to destroy him. And so the story goes on. Here he had to follow the Lord to go into Egypt, and God says, I'll tell you again when to come out, and all those kind of things. There had to be a sensitivity to God for the Christmas story to come about. And so many other stories in the Bible and, and that hasn't changed from today, folks. We've got to be sensitive to God. And that's what I want to talk to you about today is sensitivity and the Christmas story. Let's pray. Father, as we read these scriptures, we're reminded, God, that you are moving, talking, uh, Father, and we can sense you, we can experience you on a day-to-day -day basis. So, God, our prayer is that you would have your way and you would help us, Lord, to listen to see, to hear, to, to spend that time with you, God. Finding out what you're saying and making that more important than anything that a friend has to say, more important than the Internet, more important than anything else, Lord. So God, speak to your people and help us to be people that hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. This may be one of the most important messages I've ever brought to you. Because I think we're becoming, many people are becoming too busy today to even sense God in their life. The only time they think about God is when they go to church on Sunday. And then they, and they look for their Bible, or that's the time they say they'll be spiritual, or that's the time they'll think about God. And I'm here to tell you, God wants to get through to us every day of our lives. Amen? And so we have to be aware of what God's trying to say. And so let's look at some of these this morning. First of all, we need to hear God's heart. We need to hear the heart of God. I'm here to tell you that just as God was concerned about the Lord Jesus and His dangers and, and telling Joseph what to do, He's concerned about you. He's concerned about what's going on in your life. There are dangers ahead of you. There are traps. In fact, the Bible says that we're to be always ready, we're to put on that whole armor of God because we are to be aware of the plans or the schemes of the devil, the Bible says. And don't think for a minute, if you're a believer, that God doesn't have a plan for your life. And we want, I want you to know something else, the devil's got a plan for your life. 
He'd like to bring you down. He'd love to discourage you. Many of you are experiencing things in your life today. We've talked about it unusually high. We seem to see a lot of attacks of the enemy today. He'd love to destroy your home. He'd love to destroy your health. He would love to deceive your heart. I want you to know, my friend, right now, God has what's best in interest for you, and the devil wants to do everything he can to disrupt what God wants to do in your life. So I'm asking you today to to be aware, to be sensitive, to be as as sensitive about what God is saying and doing in your life as you are about that screen and what's going on on that screen. I'm going to tell you, I I believe that that there's, as much as technology can be a good thing, it can be an evil thing. It can be something that will help set a plan to, to drift you away from God or to take your eyes off of God. So be aware of what God is saying just as we're aware of what everybody else in this world seems to be saying. We need to hear God's heart in Acts chapter 27. If you look there right quick in verses, uh, verses 9 and 10, look what it says there. Uh, there was a, this was a message that I actually brought recently to you. And we, we mentioned in this, in verse, Acts 27, verses 9 and 10, Not when much time had been spent, sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was already over. Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end in disaster and much loss, not only the cargo of the ship, but also our lives. God was speaking to Paul. Later on, he comes back to him and says, God told me another message. He said, Won't you? No, you're going to live, but you're going to lose the ship, and it's going to be tough. And so, time and again, God has been at work around us to make us aware of the things the devil would do to bring heartache, to bring pain in our lives, but yet, just as Paul was there, just as Joseph was over, and Mary was over in Matthew and in Luke's gospel, we see where they were sensitive to what God was leading There is a requirement for us. If we're going to hear God, if we're going to sense God in the heart of God, we're going to have to spend time listening for God. Oh, my friend, could I ask you how long it's been since you spent time just sensitive to what God was saying in your life? I mean, how long has it been that that you just felt like you had heard from God? Well, my friends, there's a lot of ways to hear God. In fact, Charles Stanley's got a great little book out called How to Listen to God. It's probably 20, 25 years old. But it, How to Listen to God, a wonderful little book I read, and it talked about all the different ways. Let me just list some of them or most of them for you. First of all, reading your Bible. When you read your Bible, you should hear God speak. Because when you've read that holy, inerrant, infallible Word of God, I want you to know those are promises that you can stand on. And there are warnings in there. Some of it's not just what God's going to give you. Some of it's what God says. If you're wise, you'll stay away from these things. That's wisdom. That's God speaking to His children and wanting to direct them to do the right things. that That they may sidestep a lot of the heartache that the devil has for them. A second thing is not only the Bible, but the Holy Spirit. If you'll be quiet and listen, the Bible says, uh, be quiet and hear God and wait upon the Lord. Listen to me, the Holy Spirit of God will speak to you about things. I I could give you examples in my life. Let me give you one example that that was spared us a tragedy in our life. I remember one time my son was a little bitty boy, probably seven or eight years old. We were out deer hunting. He'd never killed his first deer, and and we were there, and we'd actually... uh, it was sitting on a mound of dirt, and a, a deer walked up, and he shot. He got to shoot it, first deer he ever killed, and it was down, but it, it wasn't dead, and uh, needed to be finished off, and I remember that. Now, right now, some of you who are animal rights activists are criticizing us for that right there. Hey, don't be critical. We clearly killed it on the second shot. Amen. All right, so just want to make sure you understand that. Uh, but uh, we, he jumped down with the gun without me realizing it, and he jammed the barrel in the mud, and it probably went six or eight inches deep in the mud. I didn't think anything about it. He had the gun. It was my gun, but he had jumped down before I did, and we went over there. I was fixing to finish the deer off. I said, Some, and I mean lights and bells and whistles were going off in my head. I said, wait, wait, wait. Let me check that gun. And I checked it, and sure enough, that barrel was full of mud. It would have exploded had he shot it because of the, the danger there. But God the Holy Spirit warned 
me of that. I, I'll never, no reason for me to even think that there was mud in the barrel of that gun. But that's the way God works. Now, that's a, that's a warning maybe of safety, but God does the same thing with the Word of God. He does the same thing about positive things in your life. He may tell you to stop and help somebody that you normally wouldn't stop. He may tell you to minister to somebody by giving them a gift of something, helping them financially. Uh, I, I know I'm always, every now and then I'll go to a place, and I know I went in a coffee shop one day and about a year ago, and I got up there to order, and the lady in front of me had had paid for my coffee. She, she said, pay for mine and the guy behind me. Just that pass it forward kind of thing. And, and she had paid for my coffee. That was a blessing. And there's two or three times little things like that have happened. And I've tried to do that to other people. But I want you to know that we are, we are we're, first of all, we're a blessed people. But God wants to bless us. And God wants to bless others through us. I believe that. And that's how the Holy Spirit leads us sometimes to do things like that. There may be somebody you need to minister to. How about through scriptural music, Brother Whalen? I say I put the word scriptural in front of it because some music's not very scriptural. <laughs> Amen. And uh, just like some preaching, not very scriptural. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, but yeah, through, I've, I've been listening to songs before and just felt like God spoke to me through the message of that song. You ever felt that way? It may have been a word of encouragement. It might have been something you were praying about. And boy, that song just answered it. It's just like God was speaking to your heart through that song. How about through the words of a godly friend? You know, the Bible says there's good counsel, basically, in a multitude of, of counselors. Or, or uh, you know, the Bible may lead one person who's full of the Holy Spirit to speak to somebody and, and encourage them, yes, but also... They may know what they may have been praying with you about something, and God just gives them a clear word, and they, they share that word of wisdom with you, and it confirms something in your spirit. God speaks in a lot of ways, guys, and so we need to be aware of that. But godly preaching, biblical preaching, I should say, biblical teaching, your Sunday school teacher, God can speak through that. There's just a multitude of ways that God speaks, but my friends, if we're not listening, we're not going to get the message. And do you believe God wants to speak all around us? I believe God wants to in, involve himself in your life and involve himself in my life if we'll just listen. Spend as much time listening to God as you spend listening to Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. Spend as much time listening to God. Spend more time listening to God because I promise you'll be much more correct if you'll hear God. So that's the first thing. Hear God's heart. The second thing I want you to see is see God's plan. God's got a plan for your life. Oh, He has a wonderful, wonderful plan for your life. There's a verse in Jeremiah that talks about that, how God sees you, He knows you, how He has a wonderful plan for your life. Exodus 33, you know, uh, there's verses there where it talks about, you may remember that, that uh, Moses wanted to see the glory of God, and God allowed him to see just a glimpse of his glory. And then there's a story in Isaiah chapter 6. You may remember where Isaiah, he was in the Spirit, and he saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, and he spoke with God, and he said he fell as a dead man because God came to him, and at least in this vision, and, and wanted to put his hand on him. And, and he said, Woe am I, an unclean man. And here's a prophet of God saying, man, compared to God, I'm nothing. Because he saw God. He saw the glory of God. He saw the holiness of God. How long has it been? And you know, that's what's wrong with a lot of the world today. Folks, we ain't seeing God. We, by, that I mean, by that I mean God's not running around. Well, God said you can't see him face to face. I'm not talking about that kind of face to face, seeing God face to face. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about seeing God at work. I'm talking about see, just being so in the Spirit. You know, how many times in the Bible, in Revelation, John said on the Isle of Patmos, he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Amen? And he said, I saw the Lord. Revelation chapter 1 and 2 and 3, Jesus met with him in this vision and, and spoke to him about things to write down. And, and, and I'm here to tell you, I'm thankful today that John the Apostle saw Jesus on the Isle of Patmos because he wrote us a lot of stuff that helped us prepare for the last days. I'm so thankful that God appeared himself to us even here on the face of the earth for 33 years as Jesus walked on the earth. But I'm here to tell you, you can still see 
God's effects in the world today. In fact, the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 8, John wrote about how we may not see God physically face to face, word in the sense that we can touch Him, but He said, as the wind blows where it desires, so the Spirit of God blows. You know, you can't see the wind, but you can walk outside and see what the wind is doing. You can feel the wind, you can see how it moves the trees. You can't see the wind, but you can see what the wind does. I don't know about you, but I, I'm constantly seeing the effects of God. I'm seeing the fingerprints of God in answered prayers. I'm seeing the fingerprints of God when He breaks the addictions of an addict. I'm seeing the fingerprints of God when He puts a marriage back together. Oh, my friend, God! when God heals somebody, we've seen a lot of people prayed for and healed in this church. I see the handiwork of God. How long has it been since you could just say, you saw the handiwork of God? You saw what God was doing? Let me tell you, friend, if you're not seeing these things, if you're not hearing these things, you're not getting out of your faith what you ought to be getting out of it. You ought to be getting out of it a power, an excitement, a passion that comes from experiencing, as I've said today, sensing God. We lose our passion for God sometimes. We just, we just, kind, of, we just kind of buy into religion. Well, folks, religion won't leave you full of passion. Are you with me? You can be religious and not have passion for the things of God. So I say to you today, are you one of those that is sensing the presence of God, seeing Him as well as hearing Him? Look at the third thing. We need to taste God's goodness. We need to taste God's goodness. Boy, when I think about that, tasting God, that don't make any sense, does it? Can you taste God, Brother Chuck? Well, I... Uh, I believe you can. Look at, look at Psalm 34 and verse 8. I'll just say it to you. It says, taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Have you tasted of the goodness of God? Flip over to Philippians, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Look at that verse with me. I want to show you a verse there that I did some, some work on in seminary. But it's, a, it's always been a verse that meant a lot to me uh, when I think about Hebrews chapter 6. And verses 4 and 5. Look at this. It's really talking about a person drifting away from God, not being what they need to be with God. But look what verse 4 says. For it's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift. Tasted. Did you see that? And, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. You see, you can taste God. You say, what's He taste like? Well, uh, God, when I taste God, I think about a big old piece of that Italian cream cake Miss Kathy cooks. Amen? I, I don't think about turnip greens when I think about tasting God. Amen? Oh, but I'll tell you, I, you can taste God. You just say, you taste Him, He's like, man, that's good. That's good. And you know, that's the way God is. If you really taste the God of heaven... You're going to taste some goodness. Amen? You're going to know that, man, that's sweet right there. And, and I, I just love the fact that God is, is someone that you and I can experience. Many religions today don't have that kind of relationship with God. For example, the Muslims, they believe God is kind of way out there and too busy to deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis and takes vacations and too busy sometimes and they don't bother God. So they're just trying to be good. But yet, and many religions are like that. Their God, their view of God is not a personal God. It's not a God that they walk with. It's a God that they see Him as a God in heaven who's just looking to punish them. And they're just trying to keep God from punishing them. I'm glad we don't serve that kind of God. Amen? We serve the one true God who is worthy of being tasted. There was a, there was a black pastor who was, went to hear an atheist speak on a college campus. Listen to how the story goes. It says, A well-respected scholar and avowed atheist was speaking to a large, it was an outdoor picnic. Uh, he spoke for two 
and a half hours attempting to prove that the resurrection of Jesus was false. He quoted scholar after scholar, book after book. He concluded that since there was no such thing as a historical resurrection, the religious tradition of the church was groundless, emotional, nonsense, because it was based on a relationship with a risen Christ who never rose from the dead in any literal sense. And he then asked if there was any questions. After about 30 seconds, an old black preacher stood up and he said, Sir, he said, I have one question. He has all the eyes turned toward him. He reached into a sack lunch. He pulled out an apple and he began eating that apple. He said, my question is simple, sir. He said, after taking another bite of the apple, I hadn't read all the books you have. I can't recite the scriptures in the original Greek. And he took a couple more bites of his apple. And then he said, I don't know one thing about Niebuhr and, and Heidegger. And he he continued on that apple, and he finished that apple. And he said, but I do want to ask you one question. All I want to know is this apple that I just finished, was it tart or sweet? And the speaker paused for a moment, and he answered in exemplary scholarly fashion. He said, I cannot possibly answer that question, for I haven't tasted your apple, sir. The old white-haired black preacher dropped the core of that apple into his crumpled paper bag and said calmly, Neither have you tasted of my Jesus. Have you tasted of Jesus is the question he asked. Taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Oh, my friend, a lot of people don't think there's a God because they've never tasted him. They've never heard him. and They've never seen him. Taste and see the Lord, he's good. And I'll tie that into this next one. We need to smell God's character. I believe with all of my heart, friends, God has a beautiful smell. The Bible talks about things that we do, things that we pray sometimes, and how our prayers come up before God as a sweet savor before God. I, uh, I, I don't know what all you believe about the movie that came out, about the little boy that died and went to heaven, supposedly saw his sister and all these things. And I know there were some reports that it wasn't true and, and different things. But I remember seeing that movie, and one of the things the little boy said, he said, I remember the smell of God. He said, I remember that smell as he held me in his lap, like a fresh spring day after a rain. And he talked about the smell of heaven. Now, I'm not trying to build a sermon off of something said in a movie that might or might not have been true. I don't know. But when I do think of the Bible, I think of the very character of God. The character of God is defined to us in the fruits. The God, what are the characteristics, the traits, the fruits of God? Well, I think the fruit of the Spirit, which God wants us to have, would obviously be fruits of God. It's the characteristics of God that He wants to show up in our life. So you think of all those fruits of love and joy and peace and gentleness and meekness. And I think it's not an accident that the Bible uses fruit because fruit's got a beautiful smell. Amen? Fruit has a wonderful smell and I think that smell of love and joy and peace and gentleness and meekness and kindness and all of those things, forgiveness, all of those things have a smell to them. I wish I could explain to you a, a story, and I'm going to try just briefly. When I was pastor in Georgia, we were re, had relocated our church to a new 20-acre piece of property and had a school that was growing, and we were excited and what God was doing. But one day, me and a few of the guys were out there, and we were planting oak trees around the perimeter of the property. And one of the young men that we had been kind of ministering to was unsaved, and and he, he owned a tree farm. And we had gone to his tree farm and bought all the trees from him. And he had agreed to come out with his digger and help plant those trees. Well, he was out there with us that day. And it was rainy. And it had been raining. And it was a lot of mud and a little bit of rain. And it was just kind of a sloppy day. Mud everywhere. But a few weeks later, that young man got saved. And you know why he got saved? One of the things that meant the most to him was he said, was the day that we were out there planting those trees when it was nasty and it was muddy and we could have all been griping and complaining. He said, I didn't hear one complaint. 
But this come from him. This is a new Christian, never, knew nothing really about God and how things work and what the Bible says. But he got up before the church and gave his testimony. Here's what he said. He said, when I worked with those five or six guys that day, he said, I'm going to tell you something that was the biggest factor in leading me to get saved. He said, I could smell God all over those guys I was working with. Now that's word for word what he said. I could smell God. Now if you've been in church most of your life, you probably know what that smells like. You've kind of gotten used to the smell. You're around godly people. You go to class. But if you've been living in the gutters <laughs> and, and you're used to smelling vomit and urine and you're used to smelling the trash and the rotten stuff that comes off of buildings that falls down there. You're used to wallowing around in the gutters of life. I'm going to tell you something. You can smell when you smell love and when you smell forgiveness. It smells different. It smells different than people who will take everything you got and somebody wants to give you whatever you need. Those things smell different. They smell different. I believe the love of God and the forgiveness of God smells different from the attitude of the world. The world says, I'll run over you and take everything you got. You see, the world will leave you hanging over a commode, vomiting up your guts because you had a hangover, or you just got almost overdosed on drugs. You see, that smells one way, but I'm going to tell you the love of God and a clean slate, forgiven of all of your sins, a new start, man, that smells different. It smells different, and don't tell me it doesn't smell different. And you know what you're smelling? You're smelling hope, and you're smelling a new beginning, and you're smelling God. Because that's what God does when He touches a person's life. Oh, my friend, we need to be so close to God we can smell the things of God. And we can smell what's of God and what's not of God. I'll tell you, over my years and last year, living in New Orleans for a little while, going to seminary, and there was times we'd go down and witness on Bourbon Street. I'm going to tell you something. When I walked down Bourbon Street, I didn't smell much of God. Amen? I didn't smell God down there. In fact, I smelt the world. I smelt the pits of hell. In fact, the Bible tells us that in the latter days, God's going to cast people into the lake of fire and brimstone. From what I understand, I don't know if I've ever smelt brimstone, but it's a strong sulfur smell. That ain't God's smell. That's the devil's smell. God's smell is a clean smell, like after a, a spring rain. I want you to know something, folks. That we ought to be so close to God. We know the difference in what smells like God and what smells like the world. And last of all, we need to touch God's power. We need to touch the power of God. In Matthew chapter 14, verses 34 through 36, there's a, a wonderful little story there. And in that story... If you want to look there right quick, I'll read it for you. Matthew chapter 14, beginning in verse, verse 34. It says, And when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all the surrounding region and brought to him all who were sick. And they begged them that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched, it were made perfectly well. There was people that if they had enough faith, if I could just get close when he passes by, I don't have to touch him, I don't have to hold on to him, I don't have to get his blessing, I have so much faith that he is who he said he is, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be okay. Then we know that just a few chapters further over there, uh, there's the story. Uh, well, actually, it, yeah, in chapter 9, a few chapters back, it's like the woman with the issue of blood who was on the street and as he passed by, and, and she reached out and touched the hem of his garment, and Jesus knew power had left him, and he knew that she knew that she was well. If we could just have enough faith to reach out and touch him. Well, how do we touch him, preacher? He's not here. You touch him by reaching out by faith and believing him. When you believe him, you lock hands with him. You, his power passes through to us. 
I'm not saying you're going to be able to do everything he did. But I am saying that with him, all things are possible. Oh, my friend. But unless we touch him, all things are not possible. There's another story in Scripture that you would remember, I'm sure, and it's the story from Hebrews 4.16, where he invites us to come boldly before his throne of grace. Sometimes when we're praying here on Sunday night, we have a prayer time on Sunday night. If you're struggling and if you need prayer, you can just request prayer and we'll come and, and, and we'll, we'll lay hands on you and pray for you if you need to be prayed over. And, and, uh, but, but I'm here to tell you, I use it in this prayer sometimes that God, we're reaching out right now to grab a hold of that throne. I believe with all of my heart, if we'll come boldly before that throne of grace, if we'll grab a hold of that throne, that we can see anything happen with God. That we can just pray for God's will to be done. I'm not sitting here saying to you that, oh yeah, we're naming it and claiming it and anything we ask will be done. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying to you that unless we touch Him by faith, we have no right to expect the power of God to live in our lives. You see, the Bible says He honors faith. What is faith? Faith is believing what God said. Believing that God will do what He said He'll do. Believing, as it says in Hebrews 11, that He created the worlds out of nothing. That's why I, I say you can't have faith and believe in evolution at the same time. I don't care what they say. My Bible tells me that I believe that God, it says He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Oh, my friend, how long has it been since you personally felt like you had reached out and were in touch with God? Friends, as we talk about the Christmas story this week, it's so easy to... To just kind of say, yeah, well, everybody knows the story. But I'm here to tell you, if you'll look at the Christmas story, it couldn't have happened unless some shepherds and some wise men and Mary and Joseph and all of these people that we've ta we're talking about in this Christmas story were not sensitive to God's leading and God's touch in their life. You shouldn't come to church and just say, I want to hear how, I want the preacher to tell us how he's reached out and touched you this week. I want to hear how you, God, have, have spoken to the pastor, have, have, how he's seen you, how he's heard you. Surely, hopefully, he's done that in every church today. But you, you have an obligation to reach out to God. You have an opportunity to hear God, to see God. And my friends, if we don't, we're not experiencing the depth of faith that we could experience. We're not experiencing the depth of our relationship with God that we could experience. So I say to all of us today, sense God. Man, be connected to God. Know He's real. No, He is just a breath away. Know that He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And nothing is too big for Him that you would bring to Him. Do you know that God? Are you sensing God in all kinds of ways? I pray you are. If you're here this morning and you're a Christian and maybe you've not been really experiencing God the way you could, oh, I'm here to tell you today, start. It starts by spending time with Him. It starts by listening to Him, trying to see how He's at work around you. I think even smelling God and just knowing that He's real. Do you feel Him today? If you haven't been feeling Him, because there's, listen, there's been times in my life when I felt like it was hard and I, I had drifted away from God and God hadn't drifted from me. Maybe you've done that and you just need to get that right this morning. But hey, if you're here and you're not saved, musicians, would you come this morning? If you're here and you're not saved today, 
Oh, God has so much for you. Don't miss out on what God has for you. Man, He wants you to know He's just you can reach out to Him. He wants you to know you can speak to Him. You can hear Him in a lot of ways. But you have to become a person. In fact, the Bible says uh, about how we believe the Lord, we trust the Lord, and how He reveals Himself to us in spirit and in truth. So we have to listen. We have to get quiet. God says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I'm God. I'll be honest with you. It really don't matter what so-and-so said that lives out in New York City on Twitter. It don't really matter what Billy Bob thinks, what he put on Instagram. and it, it, None of that really matters. Unless they're speaking to you a word of God. What matters is what's God saying. And you know what He wants to do? I believe with all of my heart. God wants to put His arms around you. He wants you to feel like He's walking right with you. Seeing what you see, hearing what you hear. Patting you on the back, encouraging you, picking you up when you are goofy and make stupid mistakes and fall down. And when you sin and disobey, He just kind of, you know, God don't start hating you when you blow it. He picks you up and He dusts you off. And He says, let's start over. But folks, if you don't sense He's there, you're just missing out on stuff God's got for you. Would you bow with me? If you're here today and you're not saved, you don't know God that way, you could come this morning and trust Him. Come this morning and receive Him. Come this morning and say, God, walk with me. God, I want to experience you. Some of us are believers, but we may need to get on this altar and say, God, I hadn't been sensing you. God, I've been walking in my own power. And God, I'm discouraged because I listen to everybody else and I don't listen to you. God, forgive me for that. Forgive me, Lord, for not making time for you. And then some of you this morning just need to say, Pastor, I want Jesus. Whatever you need to do this morning, if you're unsaved, just come to me and say those three little words, I want Jesus. And I'll pray with you. I'll share with you how to receive Him. Would you stand with me? Father, we commit this invitation into your hands. Lord, you alone can save us. You alone, God, can invite us. Today, Lord, hear our hearts. Look at our hearts, God. Speak to our hearts. Draw those that are unsaved to you this morning today that they may begin to walk with you and hear you and love you. Oh, God, have your way is my prayer. And then, God, use us like you used Mary and Joseph and, and those shepherds and those wise men and all of those who were sensitive to your leading. Oh, God, use us that way is my prayer. We may be your vessels that proclaim your wonderful message to a lost and dying world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. As we sing, you come this morning. Let God have his way. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow This is Jesus. God's message, God's day for you, my friend. What do you need to do? I have decided Don't leave out of here this morning. To numb to the things of God. Jesus. No turning Cold. back and miss out on what God no has for you. No turning back. The world behind. Come on, right me. now. If you need to make some decision, the altar the is open. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me, 
the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back all right amen thank you uh, I want to say a special thank you to all of you who came up this week and helped decorate the sanctuary and thank you so much for the time and dedication you put in doing this, uh, taking down the Thanksgiving stuff, putting up the Christmas stuff and it just beautifies our sanctuary and thank you so much for doing that. When we close in prayer this morning, uh, I want to remind all of you that we need to move some tables around. We're going to take up in the, in the new fellowship hall, the, the bigger one, not where the kitchen's at, we're going to take up those old tables. And we're going to put some round tables down and uh, meet a few of our guys over there right now, if you would, and help us fix that up uh, this morning for our children's events coming up this week, if y'all would, okay? All right. Uh, I want to uh, take just a moment before we go, and I want to recognize our two ladies back here in the back. Hey, y'all both back there this morning? I couldn't see. There you are. There you are. These two sweet ladies right here, and I ran off and left y'all sheets. I forget names. Alma, Charlene, and Alma. They come this morning. These are, these are, well, trouble. Miss Ruth, go forth. Her sisters. And I don't know. There may be a limit. There, are y'all from Caldwell Parish too? Well, I don't know. I think we've reached a limit on Caldwell Parish. I don't know. We may have to reconsider that. But these sweet ladies want to both put their membership here with us at Washita and. And they uh, filled out a form for us a couple of weeks ago, and I've talked to them. And as y'all know, we don't actually vote on that till the next business meeting, and that'll be coming up uh, the second Sunday in January. So uh, uh, we look forward to that, and, and several several others who want to join, or who are have made decisions, and we'll vote on that all at that time. Thanks for being here this morning. A lot of events coming up the next few weeks. Don't forget, it's not this Wednesday night, but the following Wednesday night, it's a children's musical that's going to be at six o'clock not six thirty you may have seen written out and printed up six thirty we're going to change that to six and then there will be there'll be no supper that night but the food will be after the the children's program when every Sunday school class is going to set up a table full of finger foods and stuff over there in the fellowship hall and uh, we'll eat after the program that night okay and uh, so much going on don't forget to see Miss Alta or one of these ladies about the our, our Miss Stacy, or call the office if you're going to come to the children's, uh, what's it called, next week? What? Yeah, the, the Christmas gathering uh, here at 3.30, starts at 3.30 next Saturday. All right, meal and ice cream bar, all kind of nice things, okay? And please let us know if you're coming so we know how many to prepare for. All right? Anything else need to announce, Wayne? I, I, I don't know that we're doing points of not doing them this year. Okay. All right. Anything else need to be announced? Tomorrow night, prayer meeting at Brother Matt's house. Okay. No one else? Mike, Merrick, would you dismiss us?